Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. And welcome to this very special edition of Atlanta Business Radio. It's actually time for our Market Mate Atlanta series. Stone Payton and producer Blake here with you, but more importantly, our esteemed host for this show, Market Mate Atlanta, Mr. Corey Rick. How are you, sir? I'm good, Stone. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing great. I missed you over the weekend. I had the most pleasant experience. We went up to Because you weren't with me? Well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Uh, we had a great time. We went to my wife's best friend's daughter got married at a zoo. And aside from the fact that there were two bars and a marvelous reception dinner, we actually got to feed the giraffes. And that was just a way cool experience. I don't know why you crossed my mind during that time. Maybe I was just so excited about the Monday show. But uh, yeah, man, it's been too long since you and I've done this. Well, probably been a whole week or two, hadn't it? Yeah, I've... Uh... I've apparently got to get out more. <laughs> um, I'm not really sure why you thought of me while you were at a wedding in a zoo, but we'll come back to that. But it's always great to see you and spend some time with you. Do you even know what giraffes eat? Are you in on that? No. So I don't know what they eat. Normally, we fed them romaine lettuce. So I don't know. What I bet you fed them a lot of it. We did. They love it. Unbelievable stuff. Well, today on Market Made Atlanta, we have the distinct pleasure of having the executive team of American Repro Graphics Corporation on our show. Their firm is an Atlanta family-owned business that has been in existence since 1978 and success that has spanned over 40 years. I've worked with their organization personally now with my company for several years, and they've helped me immeasurably with my branding, printing, and toner needs. They are, without question, unparalleled and unsurpassed in their space with their knowledge, experience, and service. Mindy Godwin, Mitch Hamburger, and Rodney Godwin have been a true joy to work with, and they have been very, very valuable to my brand. They've been a great help to me with their expertise, with the referral of their friends and family to my business. Guys, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have all been with the company for over 20 years. Family, you work together. Tell me about that. I mean, you guys you guys get along great. Mindy started when she was eight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Um, we do. We work so well together. Uh, thanks, Corey, so much for having us today. It is an honor to be a guest. Um, I think because we put our family first, we, we keep that front of mind always, that we come first, and then we have to make sure we work together well, and we communicate well, and we just enjoy being together so much. So that helps us, you know, make it work day to day. Well, I think you've done a great job. I mean, to have three folks together, uh, you guys have all been there over 20 years, right? At least I started at age 13, a uh, summer job. Yeah. Thanks for that, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it was just the, what I grew up in. And, and again, Mindy mentioned it about being a family run it was always that way. Dad would start early in the morning. Yeah. So he was home in time that from, so we were in time when we came home from school. So he was always there. Yeah. And with mom being in the business as well, there was always a family element to it. And the way that we've built relationships with our customers and clients has been to bring them into the family. And I think the transition from professional to family and back to professional has uh, been a benefit for all, all of us. Well, I think you guys have handled that seamlessly too. You know, I've met uh, Mr. Hamburger who started the company and I want to come back to why you started it. But uh, family is something that I would use to describe uh, the organization. I mean, uh, you guys have been uh, very, very helpful uh, uh, to me from what I've seen. You've been great at building relationships, but it seems to me you've also been able to achieve uh, something I have not been able to achieve, which is work-life balance. It seems like you guys know when to shut it off and and when to engage. Is that have I made anything up there, or does that seem? Uh, we are always working on on that part. My parents did it beautifully. They literally um, called it role playing, um, nine to five, so to speak. They would be coworkers, and then. Like Mitch mentioned, when the day was over, they were back to mom and dad. So we do the same. We try our best to. We we are coworkers during the day, team members during the day, and then brother, sister, uncle, husband, wife, mom, dad, you know, 
after hours. Well, I think that I think that's fantastic because you see so many family businesses where the folks in the family don't get along. I mean, I see it over and over and over, and I, I think that's just excellent that you guys are able to do that. Before we go further, I'd like each one of you to introduce yourself to the listenership so they could get to know you further, starting with Mindy. Thank you. So uh, um, Mindy Godwin, and I have been working with the business since 1998. <clears throat> um, I started out mainly learning everything there is to know about sales and working alongside my dad, going on as many sales calls as he would possibly allow me to go on. And I'm a native from Atlanta, two boys. Um, as you know, Rodney's my husband, Mitch is my brother, and it's the best part of my job is all working together. Well, having met your dad, it, it doesn't surprise me that uh, he probably enjoyed bringing you along on those sales calls and, you. and teaching you what he knows. Uh, to me, he's a constant source of inspiration for many reasons, not the least of which he started a company that's you know spanned four decades of success. <clears throat> how, how did he get the idea to do that? Um, so in 1978, the Xerox Corporation lost an antitrust suit for monopolizing the industry. And he saw an opportunity to go in. They were having to grant um, licenses to independent companies to be able to sell and service products like Xerox. Hmm. So he took that opportunity and, um, and from there it spanned to, like we've said, promotional items, printing, and still toner and ink supplies. Now, when he took you on a sales call, did you get back in the car and did you debrief the call? And did he ask you about, oh, like, what do you think about what happened? What do you th- Always, always, yeah? yes. And he, he would tell me, and I, <clears throat> I really did love it. I, I might have shed a few tears, but <laughs> I liked the criticism because it really helped me yeah. grow at what I do. So. He taught me the gatekeeper is the most important person. Always, always know that gatekeeper, know that office administrator, that person at the front desk because they held the key to the decision maker. And if they don't like you, you're not getting past their You're desk. done. Game over, right? Boy, is, right. That, is that ever true? <laughs> and uh, Mitch, tell us, tell us what you do for the company and what your role is. Well, I grew up w- with the company, so I've, I've seen it transform over the years. Mm. And it wasn't until a few years ago that we got into the promotional and apparel side of the business as toner sales have changed uh, and the technology has changed. We were looking for new ways to expand the business. Mm. And so we've, we've always thought about it in ways of printing. Well, all promotional items in apparel is, is printing on a three dimensional product. And it just made sense. It was actually Mindy's idea. She was talking w- with someone at the the school where where her, her kids were, and it took off from there. Mm. Uh, that I mean, that's outstanding. Uh, my experience with you, uh, you know, Mitch is really on top of things. He's very responsive. Get things done. One of the things I appreciate about your organization is we don't have to ask twice. And you know, that's. Um, mm. Uh, being a person of little patience and little time, I mean, that's a huge, in addition to being great at what you do, it's great that I, we don't have to keep asking uh, for that. Rodney, tell us about what you do for the company. Well, I'm a mainly an operations guy. I kind of have my fingers in a little bit of everything. Um, I make sure everything's running smoothly internally. I keep up with all the current orders that are in progress. Um, I kind of shepherd along from beginning to end, uh, certain orders, uh, uh, in promotional items, Mitch does that, but in everything else, uh, as far as paper printing or any, any kind of project <clears throat> like that, or I also do, uh, inventory control for a lot of customers, which is there are certain customers who simply cannot be down. Their printers and copiers must yeah. work because they have someone standing in front of them where that has to be used right then and there at a point of sale or a purchase or, a login or, or whatever the case may be. So, uh, we control the inventory for those customers. So I have, I do a lot of running around checking with those clients, making sure they're going to have what they need when they need it. So they don't even have to think about it. Well, I think one of the ways that, that your firm has really differentiated yourself is the service. I mean, uh, I think about, you know, I'm the, I'm the king of, oh, wow, I'm, you know, my toner, my printer says I need more toner. And I look in the cupboard. And I'm like, 
yeah, I didn't order it. I can call Mindy and she'll have it like there the next day. I mean, it's, or even before, uh, just the idea that you would, um, give the service that you do. You come to the office, look at what you need, order it. I mean, that's, that to me, I see as a pretty big advantage. Um, and I, I certainly appreciate that. All right, Rodney. I love my wife. She's a wonderful person. And when I really need it, you outkicked your coverage. <laughs> I you did. need to. You need to really. You need to just slow your roll here. You should <laughs> love your wife. She's well. Corey knows my wife really well because she's a decision maker and she's the one that helped us decide on the long term planning uh, stuff that we have. As recently as last week, she stepped up to the plate and really helped me with something. But I'm trying to envision. Because God knows you needed it. <laughs> I did need it. I did need it. But day in, day out, week in, week, week out, I, I don't know. It must take some. I, do you guys have like some ground rules that you put into place so that you can manage the 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 spousal relationship and the work relationship, or did it just? When it comes to work, her name is on the door. Mine is not. <laughs> so uh, it it kind of goes that way. Oh wow! Um, what she needs me for is things that I am good at, and she is not. And she is good at a lot more than I am. So I take those roles that she assigns me and says, you know, you're really good at this, this, and this is what I want you to concentrate on. And then the rest of it, I stay out of the way. And that's basically my philosophy. I, I might give an opinion if asked. Otherwise, you know, I know what I have to do and what needs to get done and what I'm good at. So I stay on that path. Does that take enormous discipline? Uh, meditation is usually what it takes. You, you know. Are you serious? <laughs> Uh, I am that, that was such a quick response, Maddie. It seems <laughs> it like you've thought quick. about that. I am serious. Uh, I, you know, it goes back to what her dad has taught us all along the way is know your role and be able to separate your work life from your home life. And I know a lot of people have a, a tremendous issue with that, but it's been 20 some years this way now. And it, it didn't, may not have been like that on day one. It's that way now because we have a lot of practice. Um, and just over the years, you come to realize you may have done something in business that she's not particularly happy with you about, but that doesn't mean when you get home that's going to translate over and you know, she's still not going to be happy with you. So you just have to know that role. You have to know why what is going on is going on and be able to separate it. Well, it seems like you guys have a great team, and to be able to to say that and then do it is uh, uh, excellent. I mean, I obviously you do it because you've been together for more than 20 years. You, you rarely see that. Um, it, it also helps that my brother has a psychology background and he, he was in that field. <laughs> who, who does that help exactly? Oh, it helps, it helps all us all. Um, so he's, he brings this calm, just low key attitude to the office. Um, and he's, they're both brilliant guys. Luckily they are the brains behind the business, but he, uh, Mitch, kind of he really puts us back into our place Mm. if we get huffy and puffy about anything it's like come on guys it's not rocket science we let's calm down and we do but it has to this business in particular i would think has to have its pressures i'm i'm operating under the impression that at least the promotional product side of the business is a very competitive arena right a very crowded marketplace so you have to find ways to differentiate yourself and then once you've done that and won the business, now you've got to keep it, right? Right. And I think there's pressure in any business that you're in. I, I know there's got to be hundreds of, of radio shows, and yet you found su- success here. Uh, there's Office Depot and Staples. But, you know, the difference is what Rodney was talking about. We step in the door. We talk to people. We build, we build a relationship. We give an honest assessment of what they have and what they need. They make the choice on what they want. And then we step back and do what we do best, which is get them what they want, when they want it, how they want it. Well, I think you, you've certainly done that. Uh, one of the things that I think sets you apart is your follow up and your service. I'd add those things in there as well. Um, I, I have to tell you that when I have an idea, I, I wouldn't have the first thing about bringing it to fruition, but I can talk to Mindy and say, hey, here, I'm thinking about doing this. And she says, you should do this. And it's always right. It's always consistent with my brand. It's always, and, and then like 
a couple days later, I have the actual <clears throat> item. You know what I mean? Because you right. guys are so good on the back end executing. Thank you. But you, oh, you're obviously a Mindy fan. You're obviously an ARC fan. Uh, you're a Mitch and Rodney fan. But it's a whole different level that you take it upon yourself to refer them to other people. Well, so, I think uh, – I'm sorry. I interrupted you. No, I just want, I want to learn more about the mechanics behind that because – me too. Like I find people and in my heart, I want to help them any way I can. I want to refer them to other people, but I don't have, I, I don't think I'm good at it. I, there's, there's probably a, a way to, better ways to do it than, than I'm doing this. I'm interested in, you know, how do you, how do you manage the mechanics of properly referring someone? And because you're putting your reputation on the line, yeah. you're, you're asking them to invest their time and energy and, and, and you're asking the person you're referring to. There's a lot of, Moving parts there that I think sometimes maybe I haven't, I haven't taught myself. I haven't learned how to manage all that properly. I think Mitch started to say this where, you know, there's pressure in any business. Uh, the way, you know, the way that I look at it is, you know, pressure is a privilege and it's really, it's simple for me to send these guys business because, you know, the binder that you and Holly have that discusses the whole idea of long-term care, right. Mindy, Mindy and her team put that together. So naturally, when I bring that out and I start going over it with people, people are like, wow, that is so cool. Did you come up with that? And it's first cabin. It's, but it's reflective of it makes us more willing to make an investment in the service. It's just those, they're little things, but they're not little it, things. It's right? a significant difference maker. But Mindy went out and built, had the leather binder built. She printed it, the materials in it for less than I was paying. And then she says, hey, you need to have – you know, uh, an area for a pen there, an area for a business card, stuff that I never would have thought of. So, you know, when I set that on an executive's desk, they're like, wow. And suddenly you're in business. Suddenly you have a brand, right? And so Mindy, we've been working together for several years now. And it's a lot of times that happens automatically because people will go, man, where did you get this pen? <clears throat> Who gave you that idea for that magnet? And I'd love to sit here and say, you know, look, let's be honest. My knuckles still drag on the ground. None of this is my idea. <laughs> but they're they're very easy to refer because they're good at what they've done. My people that know me are going to ask me, what's your experience with them? I'll say, well, you know, they did printed the binder. They print, you know, they did the pens. They did the magnets, my business cards. They've, uh, they've done all kinds of projects and – Stuff that I never would have really had the idea to do, but Minnie would say, well, I think you should do this. And it's like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So when he does this, do you guys treat a referral or a Corey referral? Does it get some, I don't know, does it go into this sort of set of rules and protocol? It's a priority. Yes. Because just like you, you said, the importance of him referring us puts his reputation on the line. Right. Well, when that comes to us, his reputation is on the line and so is ours. And we don't want to look bad to Corey because he's not going to send something else our way. And we could damage the relationship that he has with this person. This is a high stakes game here we're talking about. It really is. <laughs> I'd like to say it comes easy um, because we do like to treat all of our customers the same. But uh, exactly what Mitch said. I mean, if your reputation's on the line, we are going to make certain that you always look good. Well, I think, you know, when you build a relationship with somebody, even if it's only, you know, one way, um, if I've had a good experience with somebody, I, I really, I'm, I'm really not a scorekeeper. You know, if, if somebody's done a good job of, with something for me, I, I'm happy to, you know, to put that karma out there to help somebody else because I know, you know, when I started my company 18 years ago, I had all these ideas and I'm like, well, I need to go to Kinko's. And I'm like, oh, that, I mean, that was, not the right move. The right move is to talk to somebody that has expertise in branding and printing and those things. But I just didn't know enough 18 years ago. And I think having somebody to assist you with your branding, especially a team, especially a team that's here with this much experience is really, really beneficial. Because when I, when I get to know people, I talk about the importance of the brand and what you're doing to build it and you know how you do things that are consistent. And these guys have really helped me. I mean, if, listen, if they, if they hadn't helped me, they wouldn't be here. I mean, they, right. they've been very, very helpful to me. So where is some of the low hanging fruit? Like, what are some things that, like a company like ours, you know, we, we are with a lot of money, <laughs> actually with not a lot of money, but we do understand the importance of branding and it, and it, with so much, um, activity around digital 
radio now. There's a there's a big podcasting movement. And so to differentiate what we do from the you know the the mainstream kind of podcasting movement, we ought to be doing things that are above and beyond, like you talked about with a binder and 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 that kind of thing. But for those companies, where is some low hanging fruit, some do's and some some don'ts to be thinking about when it comes to this kind of thing? Well, the good thing about what we do is there are there's so many alternatives. So if if somebody just comes in and they have a project in mind, but they can't wrap their mind around it because they saw someone else's project that was so expensive, well, there's there's options, literally yeah. options for every product. There's several different options. So you know you just have to take a little time to spend with us, and we sit down and we find out exactly what you want, what your goal is, what the result of the product is for you and and we come up with that and we stay within your budget and we meet your deadline yeah. and we make it happen. I think the low hanging fruit is that everyone needs something that we do. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I think it also depends on who you want to reach. Who are you looking to reach with that product? And, and that that that's a lot of what goes into deciding on something. Who are you looking at? Who do you really want to speak to? This it sounds like you guys this requires a conversation. This is not an order form, right? Otherwise, I'm going to shoot myself in the foot like Corey talked about. In, in order. I, I don't think I said that. Gaz- <laughs> <laughs> That's what I inferred. I'm going to order a gazillion stickers or 22,000 coffee mugs when what I should have ordered was something completely different based on what I'm trying to accomplish. And to talk with someone that's been in the business 20 plus years is going to be a lot. And, and it sounds like you guys are willing to do that, to have that conversation. We we love that. That's the best part is is meeting people like you and finding out what it is that you want and you need. I know the online companies are not going to come over to your office and hang out with you for an hour. And yeah. they're great for, for, for some emergencies. We all love, all love the World Wide Web. But when you need a real, you know, a personal assistance, and so many of us do, that's, that's what we're good at. I can't imagine taking a look at something like this and not building a personal relationship with somebody to help your brand, I, you know, because they get to know your habits. They get to know kind of what you need. They can counsel you. Hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? And it never comes off to me as, as pushing, you know, right. I mean, uh, so you, you know, you, it, it's loud and clear to me that you're looking out for me, which it makes it simple to refer you. Plus I, you're very good at what you do. Uh, you've been loyal to me. That obviously makes uh, an impact. Um, you know, you've sent me business, and that's kind of that's kind of neat because nobody wants to talk about long term care, um, not but until it's it happens. So important. To me. <laughs> I I, I want to tell you, if I had not been in the business I'm in, I would have never met Corey. And I, I mean, my family, my friends, we have learned so much from you, Corey, and. I was always told, oh, you're way too young. I'm not anymore, but you're too young, <laughs> too young to think about long-term care. And, you know, they're so wrong because I took it out while I was young and healthy. So financially, it's affordable. And Corey took the time to speak with my parents whose plan, they'd never thought about, you know, revisiting what they were doing. He looked it over. He took time. And you know, they luckily, they have a good plan. But... When my dad gives me the approval, you know what? That guy knows what he's doing. Corey's, Corey's good. Um, it made me, you know, and, so confident. You know, toner and printing is, are not necessarily that, that much of a, an exciting thing. But what we get excited about is when those people come to us and say, well, here's who I want to reach or here's what I want to do. That's exciting for yeah. us because we get to delve into their little, their business and their world a little bit, you know, and it, kind of takes us out of what we do and, and we put ourselves in their place. And that, that's the way we think about the projects. You know, if I were Corey, who am I looking at reaching? What do I really want to convey with this project? And for us, that's the excitement of the business. It's yeah. not the sales at the end. It's <clears throat> delving into how to make a project actually interesting and focused and, and do what we want it to do. You know, I was actually thinking about you three weeks ago. I'm out with a bunch of guys. Were you feeding giraffes? Were you too? at the zoo too? <laughs> <laughs> well, they need some fiber too. But, but we were out with a bunch of guys, and a friend of mine comes to me, and he's talking about his mother-in-law has early onset uh, Alzheimer's or dementia, and he's like, "We're going to have to put her into a home." And I'm like, "Oh, that sounds terrible. I'm very sorry. You know, this is so hard." And I was like, "So she has long-term care." 
I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm like, well, what's it going to cost to put her into this home? She's in her early 60s. Oh, that's I know. It, that's exactly. Wow. You, you can't see his face, but it's the face that this guy made, which is, I'm afraid. Yeah. I'm, I'm scared of what this is going to be like. We can sell all, all of her things, but is it going to be enough? I never want someone to look at me or look at my family and go, what are we going to do? Yeah, I don't think that'll, that'll happen. It won't happen because we have you. I, we have you. And my wife and I are both very happy owners of long-term care insurance. Well, we appreciate that. You know, it's a... Uh, I think in, in, in both our businesses, there's an educational component. Um, and I think that, um, your branding, if you print with it, if you print on it or simply want it printed, that makes sense. And I think you've really created, uh, that awareness where, Hey, maybe your way in is, is you get toner. Well, everybody needs toner. And nobody can run out, no matter how big or small your business right. is. And I think if they interact enough with you guys, you can figure out, okay, well, Rodney says, hey, you know, Corey bought toner from us two months ago. It's about time for him to re-up. And, you know, I'm just going to do, yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. You need, to, you need to send some more of that over. But, I mean, you've made something like that easy. You know, where, you. where I would, uh, you know, typically, you know, I say, oh, you know, you're out of black toner. And I think, oh, I got to go over here. I got to go over there. Do they have it? And I'm like. I just need to have it here. That's what I need to do. Well, you know, everything is about making an impression. Yeah. And if someone comes to your, your office and you're like, I'm sorry, I can't print any of your forms. Or Yeah, I, that's helpful to my brand. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, imagine this. Uh, two plumbers come to your house. One of them comes, his truck is wrapped. It talks about all the things that he does. He's wearing a uniform that has his name and the company name on it and the next guy shows up he's wearing a black sabbath t-shirt and his he's messy he's, he's driving a plain white van even if it's two guys whose skills are, are equal and even their price is equal you're going to feel more comfortable making the referral of, mm -hmm. of the guy that looks good 100%. well that's what we do for our customers is we want them to mm. look good for their customers yeah i think making sure that the brand speaks for itself and that, you know, you guys, I think have done a good job of looking out for me and making sure that I do things that are consistent mm -hmm. with the brand that's been developed. Um, so, you know, certainly, you know, can't be grateful enough for that. And in, in terms of referrals, I think I, I like you guys, you guys have really helped me. So it's, for me, it's easy. I mean, because any business needs the things that you do. And when I get to the end of doing what I do, I'll say, Hey, are there any other pain points in your business? And they'll, well, what do you mean? This uh, is a regular yeah. discipline of yours. Absolutely. Yeah, they'll say, ah, you know, I don't like my CPA. He never calls me back. Or I don't like my benefits guy. Or I don't, well, how about your branding person? How good of a job are they doing? Well, what do you mean? Well, you know, are they doing things? Are they helping you, you know, promote the brand? Oh, geez, I haven't really thought about that. Well, you know, here's the people that, here's what they do for me. <laughs> and here's kind of the things that, oh, geez, yeah, have them give me a call. And, um, it's fun to create an opening where there may not be an opening for some, for, for organization like you. It's fun to crack doors for you guys. Do you guys find Thank yourself doing you. the same thing? Like, do you I try. have I, a discipline of trying to like, how do you tee up a Corey? Corey is one of a kind. He's, he's the best <laughs> there right. is. I, I think my say. wife would agree with you. <laughs> he's the best But like, is. okay, so how do you tee up a stone? Or maybe well, you don't yet because you don't know stone well enough. You that, don't know his work well enough you know, yet. That's, right? it, that's it. When you form that relationship with someone and you trust them and you depend on them and you really like them, it's easy to refer business. And I, too, know that what Corey has and offers and sells is something that everyone needs. So it's simple to talk to friends about what he does. And are we as good at it as Corey at making that? <laughs> For us too, it's been, a, it's been a matter no. of timing. Corey hit us right at the right age. So, uh, you know, we had really, this mm. had started to creep into our minds. And, really? and Not for me. We're at, <laughs> He's a lot me. older than me. For me. Uh, we, uh, Rodney, Rodney appreciates that, I, I can I tell. I do. Uh, it's the truth. 
Uh, we had started thinking about that kind of thing, and our friends are all at the ages, yeah. and our business colleagues are at those ages, and mm-hmm. so for it's an easy conversation because it does come up a lot. I mean, in just your everyday conversation when you're hanging out, you know, well, well, how many more years are you going to work? Are you going to retire? You know, that, that right. those conversations start happening. It's real easy to slip in. Hey, have you thought about long term care? Because we hadn't, and man, we're glad we did. Well, and it's fun to be, uh, and and I I'm getting from the the gist of this conversation, good business to be the the guy that knows the guy, right? The the mm-hmm. connector. Always. This is, Always. Everybody wins in that conversation as long as it's authentic and it's, it's genuine, right? Yeah, right. I think I think in any. You know, like these guys, if you build the right relationship with someone, they're going to come to you with other things. And if, you know, once I plant my flag, you know, with my aspect of long-term care, they're, they're going to ask me, well, hey, you know, um, I'm having trouble with, you know, uh, with my printer or I'm having trouble with my CPA or, uh, you know, hey, can you, can you send me anybody? Um, or I'll ask them, hey, are there, are there, is there any other way I can be of service? Well, what do you mean? Well, do you have any other pain points? And another thing that comes up is, you know, this whole payroll processing thing. I did not realize that that was an issue until several years ago when a client basically badgered me into finding a solution for him because the current payroll company was asking <laughs> him to buy other things, benefits, you know, um, uh, 401k plans and stuff. And, and finally, he just looked at me and he said, what's hard about this? I need you to find this solution for me and I don't want to be sold a bunch of other things. And so I made I found the right relationship with a company that is ver- solely focused, kind of like what these guys are, kind of like what I am. And they've really they've also shined in front of the people that I put them in front of. And it occurred to me that I've got all of these f- contacts and folks, and they expect you to have answers for them. So like my wife and I go out to eat a lot, so we'll get asked those questions. Or you know, you may get asked, hey. You know, I wrecked my car. Where should I go take my car? And so, you know. So your antenna are always up for this kind of thing. This is trying this to is be, just yeah. Built in for you. I think if we can add value beyond what we do, I think it just helps you with their, with the relationship. And if you can become, you know, uh, the quarterback where somebody says, oh, I don't know, I, you know, I'll call Corey. You know, even though he only sells long-term care, okay, well, maybe he'll know a financial plan or maybe he'll know somebody, you know. Or even if he doesn't, it sounds like you're the guy that will go on the hunt. Yes. And, and now you definitely well, will have your antenna up. And I think you've raised another point. I think, you know, with, with these guys, you know, with, with Mitch and uh, Mindy and Rodney, they, they're always responsive. They always follow up. I mean, you can't refer people, you can't refer business partners or referral partners into somebody and not have them follow up. I mean, you just, you can't, right. you can't have a client say, Hey, uh, you know, your guy hasn't called me. Mm-hmm. That, that's the worst. And, you know, Hey, you have the phone, you have texting capability, you have email. Um, you got to follow through. And so I know that whatever I send them, they always follow through on. So I'm, I'm good with it. So that makes it even easier. Aside from the fact that they're very, very good at what they do. They're responsive. They've been together a long time. They follow through. That's a, that's a, that's more of a key component than, than most people realize. Cause there's, there's people out there that, you know, they'll get a referral, but they won't do anything with it. Unbelievable. But I no, I, I, no, but I think I've experienced that before. Okay. I'm going to practice here a little bit because I feel like I have a little bit more of a frame of reference for the, the Mindy side of the business, the promotional products and, um, and you and I have, have been talking. So I feel like I have a, a little bit of a feel for that. I have zero feel. Uh, Rodney, for your side of the business. So can you talk, and, and actually part of my motivation is genuinely so that I can have my antenna up. I really am practicing here out in the marketplace for people that might need and want that kind of service. Tell me a little bit more about that side of the business and, and how you serve folks. Uh, Corey mentioned a little slogan we have about the, the three different printing, you know, whether you want to print with it, print on it, or simply have it printing. That's how we do business. We look at all aspects of that. If you want to be able to do all of this stuff on your own, we're going to provide you with the products, the printer, the toner, the the know-how to do that stuff in-house, and if that's the way you want it. If you don't want to touch it, okay, and you want all your forms to show up and just be there and be ready, we'll do that too, okay? That it, we, we see so many different philosophies, <clears throat> philosophies these days. I'll give you an example of just in the printing realm. There's a lot of companies that have gone to what's called hub printing. They want one machine. And they want everybody's stuff to flow to it. That's fine. If that's the way we want it, we'll provide a solution just like that. Okay? We'll give you your one machine. 
We'll give you, you know, a way to network it all together and, and put it all together so that you can print in one area so that everybody's going to the same place and you know what you're printing where at all times. And then there are a lot of companies, uh, I'll take medical offices, for instance, who uh, don't have that philosophy at all. That's not what they want. They want workstations where each, you know, person where has their printer. Print. Exactly. So we also will provide that solution, you know. And there are some companies that don't want to print it at all. They don't want to look at it. They don't want to touch it. They want it to be ready. They want it to be sitting on the <clears> shelf, ready to go, and don't want to mess with it. Hey, we're a commercial printing company as well. So we will print all their forms, all their documents, everything they need, business cards, whatever it is, and have it there ready for their use when they, when they need it. Now, do you guys print the great big stuff? We do. Mm-hmm. It Pretty much these days, if it can be printed on, we can print it. And that's where the promotional items come in and banners right. and signage and on and on and on and on. We can we have capability to do all of that. What do you guys like best about what you do? Shopping. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, we like meeting people like you guys. Really. We like, of course, like we've said this whole time, working together because we happen to really dig each other. And we travel together and we have dinner together often. Um, but the, is it like blue bloods? Did you ever watch that show blue bloods? But we don't have time to watch much TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, every Sunday they get together and they have dinner. Okay. Go I, ahead. I, I interrupted wanna, you. Yeah, no, no, I, we need to watch. I, I don't watch TV. My, everybody else in this world is normal, but me. Um, I, but we like making new relationships and meeting people and just hoping to solve their printing problems. That's the best yeah. part. My favorite day of the week is this. We have a customer, well, at the airport, Enterprise, Alamo, and National. Big car firms. Mm. Every week, I go down and do uh, inventory management. And my favorite thing is I go through and I see every, I see every, everybody from the top of the chain to the guy who's signing off on papers. And I get to know them by name. I know what church some of them – attend mm-hmm. i i know what some of their hobbies are and i go hey jarvis and hey rob and it's fantastic and they never have to worry i give them my cards i give them my my cell phone information i give them my email and i say if you need something i'll be here and inventory that, control so you're making sure that they they're one of those customers rodney that wants stuff printed they don't want to fool with it they want to have it on hand and, right. they want and you're you making sure to, they have it and they want yeah. you guys to manage it they sounds right like, ah and if there's an issue, uh, I go down there and they have a, a printer that's not working. They'll say, Mitch, I don't know what I did, but this isn't working. I can either, if possible, I address it in that moment. Or if I can't, I have somebody mm. on speed dial that I can say, mm. I need, I need you down here. It's not, it's jamming all the time. And he says, well, I know those machines. You already stock all of the replacement parts there for us. I'll come on down, we'll switch it out, and, and it'll be fine. Hmm. And while I'm there, I'll clean the machine and I'll do all this other value-added stuff too. What a, what a huge advantage for them. Yes. Staples isn't going to do that. <laughs> well, I think, uh, again, I, I think, uh, you know, I may be a bit of a dinosaur, but I think personal relationships, uh, they'll never go out of style. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, a personal relationship, you know, I, I know I've called Mindy at, three o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon for toner. And I, uh, you know, I know I shouldn't call you, but you know, I ran out and okay, okay, we'll, we'll get it over to you this afternoon. Or we'll get it over to you first thing tomorrow morning. I mean, you're not, you're not going to get that done with Staples or one of those companies. I don't think. There goes our Staples sponsorship, <laughs> but that's okay. We love yeah. Staples. We, we love Staples. Love them. <laughs> I'm no. kidding. And, yeah. and, and mine, mine would be very similar. I get to go into uh, law practices and medical firms and, well, medical practices and law firms. I said that backwards. But uh, they all know me so well that I have the passcodes to all the doors. And I just saunter on in. That's nine trust. Times, nine wow, times out of great. ten, you know, I'm doing the inventory control, as Mitch said. I'm checking out forms. I'm checking out toner. I'm checking out paper. I'm looking at all their machines. I'm making sure everything's running. And as I go, just as he said, I get to talk to from the doctors to the girl who mops the floor. Mm. They all know me. They all know my name. They mm. want to sit down. They want to have conversations. And you wouldn't believe some of the things we mm. get a- asked to do for these companies. Mm. For a while, we catered for them because they trusted us so much that they had to have food at, at this place for mm. their employees at a certain time. And we figured it out. 
And they came to us wow. with that solution just simply because they didn't trust anybody else to be there on time and actually get it done. You know, and not that we can cook and bring it all, but we figured out a way to get another company. That's because of the know. great partners we have on Atlanta. Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I can even walk into one of these doctor's offices and he's sitting there. He'll motion me over and we'll sit there and talk for a few minutes. Usually not about business because they don't want to talk about that. But, you know, it's just amazing. And he said it, it's, it's my favorite part, too, because I just never know where it's going to lead me that day. I never know what I'm going to hear or who's going to come up with what. And it's actually exciting. You get a little spring in your step when you walk into these places because they're glad to see you yes they know what you're there for they know they can lean on you and they know no matter what the stuff they need is going to be there and when you can walk into a place and know that and then they know that about you you know there's just no trepidation whatsoever yeah i think that's a i read that as a big vote of confidence uh you know you guys you know getting Mitch handling everything down at the airport for those clients, uh, replacement parts, just taking care of stuff and, you know, them asking you to do things that maybe aren't necessarily in your wheelhouse, but they know that you'll get it done. That's, I see that as a huge vote of confidence. So, you know, back to the airport thing, Mindy was talking about that we know everybody. Well, I know the, the guard gates and I probably, they probably shouldn't just let me in, uh, without checking everything, but after, Gosh, almost 20 years of being there. They, they're like, Oh, Hey, Mitch. And I'll bring them a Christmas present. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about their kids and everybody in every organization is important because mm. if they weren't important, they'd be fired. Yeah. I, I would tend to agree with that. What is, what is the ideal client for your company? Do you think? Do you have a certain profile that you, uh, strive to get? Uh, we like franchises. We like oh, that makes sense. the headquarter being, you know, right here in town, get to really know them and kind of like an octopus, we, we branch out and reach out to all the other locations. Hmm. Um, medium sized companies, 50 and above has been great because 50 employees and above. Mm-hmm, that's a, that's a nice, um, that's a nice size, but you know, we don't turn people away. A two man office, a 5,000 person office. I mean, you never know where someone's going to be in 10 years. So treat everybody the same. And we, we do. Well, I think another thing that's important is sometimes, uh, you know, very, very often little fish become big fish. Always. And you never really know who's connected to who. So you have to be extremely careful about, uh, not helping or deciding not to help because, because of who they know. Absolutely. I mean, so many times I've been told, okay, uh, here's a referral and, and let me, let me let you know that this person is extremely difficult or, you know, don't do this. Is with that this what you person. said about me? No, <laughs> not at all. And I so would it, never say such a thing. We tend to publicly, <laughs> <laughs> we tend to work well with people that are so called difficult because a lot of times that just means, you know what, they're either fed up with who they were dealing with before or they've had bad experiences or, you know, they got a full plate like all of us, but they deal with it a little different, but, um, nobody's really that difficult. No. And what we really do at the core of our business is solve problems. That's what we do. Yeah. And we are problem mm-hmm. solvers. And sometimes the so-called difficult customers have problems that haven't been solved to their satisfaction. And that's why they're difficult. So we take those kind of customers on with a smile and we're, you know, really look at different ways to getting what they want done than they've had in the past. And sometimes, you know, I'm not saying we, we're 100 percent successful, but we've been pretty successful at taking those difficult customers and giving them a solution that they're happy with and they're no longer difficult. That's great stuff. What do you think? How has your business evolved since you guys got involved over 20 years ago? What do you think are the top two or three items? Well, technology has definitely changed since, of course, we started in 78. But since we came on in 98, technology's been probably the biggest change. You mean in terms of printing? Oh, of course. People aren't printing the same. People aren't using the same amount of supplies that they used to. You can print now to the cloud, um, which doesn't make it necessarily easier or right. But, you know, it's it's something that can be done. So... That's how we've evolved in promotional items in the last 10 years or so, because um, just another way to put your logo, put your brand out there. Yeah, the the commercial printing side has 
has definitely changed uh, the products that we are able to offer because uh, it used to be only the big production houses mm-hmm. somewhere could produce all the different variety of things that we can produce, and that's no longer the case through the technology. And also um, giving, like we said, our, our, our little motto there, giving you the choice to whether you want how you want it done. You can do it yourself. We'll do it for you. Or a little bit of both. You know, that's how technology has changed the whole entire industry is you have those options. You know, you used to have to go to Kinko's or, or mm. somewhere like that for certain things. You don't have to do that anymore. And it's affordable. You know, we and like you can Kinko's do, too. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do smaller runs cost effectively now, exactly. right? Exactly. Yes. Digitally versus spot color. Yes. Yes. And I would imagine, technical. and I would imagine that you guys have built up a ton of contacts. So if you need, uh, print something printed in a certain fashion. I would imagine course, you could access your contacts yes. and, and, and do it that way. Yes. There's just so many different print methods today. I'm, you know, something simple like a business card that used to just look like a piece of paper with some text can now, you can have one as heavy as a brick that <laughs> is embossed and engraved and just fancy. Yeah. And luckily for us, the government helps too. Uh, there are certain uh, firms and types of businesses that have to keep a certain amount of paper records on hand. They simply uh-huh. cannot do without it. Hmm. So, you know, there people still need printing out there. And for years and years and years, we have heard about the paperless society and how everybody's going paperless. Well, we sell more paper today than we ever have. Isn't that, uh, isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no irony there. <laughs> well, in the financial services business must be one of those because I, 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 I get is. a lot of stuff like – and I don't even know what to read, but they have to send it to me, the prospectus thingy, they do, Bobber. Right? Yeah. Everything they in do. small and, print. Yes, and uh, medical firms, law firms, uh-huh. CPA firms, you have to have records accessible uh, in, in a physical form a lot of times right there hmm. in your office. Now, that's I, not changing anytime soon, I'm it's sure. Not. It's not. Yeah. Hmm. What do you guys see as the biggest challenges – in your business now? I think being creative is one of the biggest ch- challenges because we, we talked about everybody does kind of what I, there are a lot of people that touch on certain areas that, that we do. But I think if you can provide someone with a creative option, um, for instance, if you're wanting to market somebody, instead of just sending them a, a pen and, and a magnet, what if you sent them a box and it had an aromatherapy candle and it had a neck roll and it had a little card and it says, we relieve your stress. Talk to ARC. <clears throat> By providing them w- with something that stands out from the crowd, we set ourselves apart. Mm. And it's constantly having to rethink that. Mindy t- talked about the importance of technology change. Well, you have social media. You have smartphones, you have emails, you have landline phone calls, faxes. I remember there was a day when we'd get faxes all the time. Mm. The only time I get them now is there's a Nigerian prince and he, he'd like to, <laughs> if you could just gave him your bank number, he'd be happy to help oh, so you So it's, it's not just me that gets those. <laughs> right. No. Okay. Um, with... Uh, challenges uh, always are acquiring new clients. That's always going to be a challenge. That's what that's for every any business. You're, mm. you're you know, Corey, yeah. you're looking for what the radio stations looking sure. for. We're all out there mm. looking for new clients. Yeah, and I think an advantage that we have that a lot of people don't is when we sit down with people, we ask a lot of questions about their business and what they do, because. If we can't get into the heads what makes them tick and what makes them successful in their business, we can't help them. Okay. If we don't know what it is that makes them successful and how they've gotten where they've gotten and what the, their goals for the future are and how they want to move on, then we can't really design things for them and around them. So I think, you know, one of the advantages we have is when we get to sit down with them, we tell them, listen, if, if you're not going to be successful going further. Neither are we. So we've got to really look at this project and look at the materials you're going to use. And is it going to forward your business? Because if it's not, it's not going to forward ours either. So that, you know, that's one of the big challenges too, is, is being able to really understand what makes their business tick and how they get new customers and what's going to make them grow. Because if we don't know that, you know, we can't really move ahead with a with a very successful program for them. That is so very different than just a typical vendor mentality, 
with everything you just described. I mean, that that's is why the they're heart. on the show. <laughs> it is. It, it really, I got kind of tickled when you asked uh, what was the greatest challenge in their business, and Mindy pointed to Rodney and Mitch, but she didn't mean Rodney and Mitch were the greatest challenge. She wanted them to answer the question. Oh, right. <laughs> but they answered it extremely well. But no, this um this whole mindset of diving into the person's world and seeing things from their perspective, you guys approach this so differently, I think, than a lot of other folks in this space. Yeah, they do. I think, you know, I think that's one of the reasons they've been around for 40 plus years. Right. I mean, they, they, they're willing to do things that others aren't. They follow up. They ask a lot of questions. They don't, you know, they don't make errors and they've differentiated themselves in a way that, Hey, they can get a start with a client. Maybe it's, they're doing some printing or, you know, maybe they're doing some branding or maybe they're, you know, they're selling toner, but they, they've developed a, a, a great business model to build relationships with people that they can expand as time goes on. I don't right. think I've missed anything there, have I? Well, yes, you have. We have absolutely missed something from my extensive pre-show research. It says here that we want to know a little bit about Jack and Spencer. Oh. We do. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> Tell so, us about Jack and Spencer. So those are those are my wonderful boys, Rodney and my children. So it's next gen ARC. So yeah, That's what it is. Are you suggesting you have three boys? <laughs> Oh, I have a lot of boys. I'm, I'm raising my dad, my brother, my husband, and then I've got my two boys. No. Um, so Jack and Spencer, they're very much into music like my brother and Rodney and um, into sports. Um, Jack is going to be playing October 5th at Red Light Cafe. Where is that? It's off Amsterdam Avenue with my brother Mitch and his band. What and kind of music man, do they play? There's a whole other side to this family. Uh, well, uh, the they, Von Traps. <laughs> they are not. Uh, my children are not very into modern music. They kind of follow in their uncle and their father's footsteps and more uh, 80s and 90s alternative and rock and nice. Mm. You know, even 60s and 70s somewhat. Uh, they like uh, the era where people actually played instruments and sang and. I'm going to say had talent. Give us an example. Like what kind of, what, what kind of, what kind oh, of music? Say it, Rodney. Just uh, well, uh, it's, it's, it's Van a wide Halen. range. Van Halen is a big deal. Again, well, Van Halen is still a big deal. Well, well, yeah. some people might argue with that, but they love Led Zeppelin. They love Van Halen, ACDC, you know, all of that nice. kind of stuff is, is what they want to so, hear and what they want to play. I got to ask the follow up question. Van Halen with DLR or Van um, Hagar? That's uh, tough. You, they... you got to take both because if you really want to get into that debate, you're only talking about one guy difference. The rest of the guys are the same guy. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I not going to get do. into that. I love their music. And yeah. I'm just going to say both. Yes, okay. they do. They yeah. like both. Errors of both. They do because they weren't there for that whole, <clears throat> you know, they're, they're looking at this way down the road and, you know, they say, oh, that's a great song or that's a great song. They don't really care. Which yeah. one is, is singing it? It's a great way to to build uh, confidence in young kids. Uh, you know, getting up in front of people, whether you're speaking or singing or playing a musical instrument, that's a yeah. that's a big deal. And I've seen you, I've seen him play. He's good. Thank you. I mean, uh, and I regret that I won't be at the next gig, but uh, I will come uh, after the October gig. Yes, December fifteenth at what coffee shop? Uh, at Waller's, we, uh, we'll be part of a charity event for Toys for Tots. Uh, I'll where, be sending out more information. Where on, is that, Mitch? I believe it's in the Decatur area. I've never been, but I've done uh, this charity event several times over the years. And this year, I wanted Jack and I to be a little two-man show. Nice. He's, he's gotten really good. and uh, I see that. We're, we're, we're writing our own songs, and it's going to be a good time. So do you have do you know the music that you guys will be playing? Uh, it'll be all original material. Your own stuff? Yeah. That is cool. So you don't just play other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. You build your own stuff, you know, write your music, lyrics, and so on. Everything. Well, start I, to finish. I can't leave out my little redheaded Spencer. Mm -hmm. Gosh, they're both going to listen to this later, and <laughs> I'm going to hear Spencer, Mom, you didn't say anything about me. <laughs> so quickly, Spencer, when my dad had hair on his head, <laughs> it, it was Spencer. red. <laughs> and so Spencer has taken after my father he looks very much like him poor kids not happy about it but um and he's he's big into sports and baseball and so he's also he's, a drummer he's also nice a drummer. so when is uh you know so when is he going to make it into the the gig uh i think he's going to be a great 
a great athlete. I, I, I think that's where his passion is. And I think it's important, like we've done, is to chase our passions. Yeah. Yeah, I've certainly words to live by. Well, you guys have had a, a lot of success over the years. And, um, you know, after having met, you know, your mom and dad, it, it isn't a surprise to me that you guys have had all the success you've had. And, and to be able to evolve and continue on and, and to respond to the market and, you know, appeal to uh, clients, whether they're individual business in multiple ways, I think is very, very good on your part. Um, Thank you. You've shined in front of everybody that I put you in front of, you've been a great, great help to me. And I can't, I just can't say enough good things about your company. Well, thank you. Right back at you. Right back at you, you is right. Yes. If you had uh, to give some advice to other folks that uh, maybe our families thinking about getting into a business like yours or getting into business at all, what advice would you give them? Um, well, I, I will say that being women owned and, and going after that, certification that I can help other companies with their supplier diversity needs is not something I would have known as a younger Mindy. I wouldn't have listened to that. I would have just, you know, pushed it to the side. Um, so I think, I think women should definitely go after their dreams. They can do it. And, um, I, I'm an example of working with family and spouse and, and it's just awesome. So, you know, if you, if folks have those opportunities, don't be scared. It really can turn out to be great. Well, you guys have done a tremendous job uh, of building a brand, helping others build their brand. Uh, you've been an immense help to me, and I just can't say enough good things about you. So we appreciate that. If the listenership wanted to get a hold of you for your expertise, how would they do it? You can call me anytime. Uh, my cell phone number, 404 310 Six two nine six. We're on, uh, of course, on the web, arc in Atlanta dot com. That's arc i n Atlanta dot com. And you know, really, we we put our cell numbers on everything we have because that's that's easy to get a hold of us. Facebook, we we sometimes dive into the social media stuff when when we can. Um, LinkedIn. Those kind of things. How about an email address? Would there be an email address sure. that you would have folks reach out to you on? Sales at ARCINAtlanta.com. Well, Mindy, Rodney, Mitch, you've had great success. Uh, family business spanning over 40 years, uh, certainly continued su success. You've been great on the show. Thank you for being such great guests. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, until next time, this is Stone Payton for Corey Rick, producer Blake, our guest this evening from ARC, and everyone from the Business Radio X family saying we'll see you next time on Market Made Atlanta.